Welcome to Chapter 5. In the previous chapter, I explained two specific pieces of information that were hacked out of my online storage by the London Metropolitan Police, and destroyed. This chapter is about a special event in my life. I named that event my little 914. On September 13, 2010, I had a sixth sense premonition that something bad would happen if I didn't leave home. My boyfriend believed me. The 14th of September, 2010, was the morning of my little 914. I left my boyfriend's home at 10 a.m. that morning. Later that day, roughly between 2.30 and 4.30 p.m., my little 914 took place at my boyfriend's home. I missed this event by a few hours, that was very fortunate. Normally, he comes home from work at 5.30 p.m. By coincidence, my boyfriend came home early, at around 4 or 4.30 p.m. He saw that his front door was open. There was a hole in place of the doorknob. At first, he thought a burglar had entered his house. Then he saw men who were not in uniform leaving his apartment, after breaking in. When they saw him, they started to run. My boyfriend chased them as they ran around the building. They could run faster than him. The chase led to the other side of the building, where two police cars and one ambulance were parked. The two police cars sandwiched the ambulance. The three vehicles drove away in a hurry before he could ask them to explain. He telephoned the non-emergency police, who accepted responsibility for the breaking into his house. The police said they had come to grab me. When nobody answered the doorbell, they had broken the door. They had searched the house. When they realized I was not in the house, they were leaving. They were intercepted by the homeowner they did not expect. Luckily he knew DIY, and the shops were still open. He was able to buy a replacement doorknob, etc. If the shops had not been open, he would have needed to sleep that night with the front door open. Anybody can enter if the door to enter your house is open at night. So he went to Wick's hardware shop to buy the items to repair his front door. But he had to leave the door to his house open to go to the Wick shop. The police were unfair. If they break down your door when you are not home, they should repair it, or they should have someone guarding the house. They put my boyfriend at risk from burglars. He does not like to complain about the police. He likes to forget all about it and act as if it never happened. He is impossible to understand. Maybe he is scared of the police. After my little 914, I continued to live away from my boyfriend's home, visiting him when it was dark. Police were prowling outside his house all the time during the day. During my absence, the London Metropolitan Police harassed my boyfriend by doing surprise visits and searching his house for dead bodies when he declared I was not at home. He was scared of the police and tried to please them in every way so they would leave us both alone. In November 2010, the police stopped hunting me down and I returned to stay with him. Why is this wrong and illegal? Up to this point, I had always been healthy. In 2010, I had minor ailments. I was seeing my GP regularly for these. My GPS-1 confirmed that he had nothing to do with my little 914. To make a medical arrest, the police needed the cooperation of a doctor. I knew my GP had never said anything to that effect. The police, the law, and the judges do not have a legal right to render a legal opinion that someone is crazy. They have to request a doctor to write that someone is crazy. A doctor's cooperation with requests by law enforcement is not generally guaranteed. 
By the time my little 914 took place, I had boarded an ambulance many times at a police officer's order, each time, my final destination was Hillingdon Hospital. It is a general hospital and not an immigration hospital. From experience, I say it is possible that the medical profession would give any kind of medical verdict requested by immigration or prosecutors for court purposes. You need to know this if you are in such a situation. But mostly, doctors will not cooperate with law enforcement. Doctors have nothing to be afraid of from law enforcement. Occasionally, doctors will give a fake report at the request of a patient. I have been more than once by doctors that someone in law enforcement has requested a psychotic report about you. They promise you will get your immigration if there is evidence you are psychotic. I have only one answer to that type of question by a doctor, no. If you are in my situation, you would benefit from understanding the above paragraph. Your future is not written in stone, in terms of whether immigration or prosecutors can get fake medical evidence about you by requesting doctors. Will they really grant immigration if you consent to a psychosis diagnosis? I admit it is possible, but there is much truth in the adage that you should not trust a blackmailer to keep their side of the bargain. I would not consider such an option if and when presented to me. Some countries, like the United Kingdom, have a law that forbids the deportation of persons with a mental disorder. This does not mean immigration can request such evidence to be created so they can immigrate you. The immigration judge is fully empowered to immigrate you at his or her discretion and does not need a crazy report about you to help you stay. The Met Police made me board an ambulance many times in 2010 right up to my little 914 to Hillingdon Hospital. These did not result in psychiatry. I cannot be sure if the police requested them for a crazy report or not. Maybe none of the mainframe hospitals in London would give the police their crazy desires. Remember, it is easy to win your doctor's favor if all you want from him is to not put anything he does not feel is true in your report. Remember, you have a God-given right to think, but not to question the authorities about their mental assessments. If the authorities carry out your mental assessment through somebody whose only qualification is to be a woman, remember she is somebody who will do as she is told by the judge. But don't express your opinion. Do as you are told, and be very sweet and trusting towards her, for best results. I apologize that these opinions may be incorrect as I am not legally trained and one UK solicitor in Chapter 10 has found me to be a simple imbecile who cannot understand simple instructions. Also, if I had even average brains, I would have been successful with UK immigration, people said. So please forgive my opinions which could be a psychosis. If doctors obeyed law enforcement to write off people the law dislikes as psychiatric, the country would become like Joseph Stalin's country. People who criticized Stalin's government were shipped to psychiatric hospitals in Siberia. They could not contact their families. All the prisoners died in Siberia. I mean, during my little 914, they were taken to somewhere special, not a mainframe hospital. Maybe to an immigration hospital, if you know what I mean. They always have to justify things like that, if questioned. It is a tough operation without my GP or the hospital supporting it. They made only one attempt, which was on the 14th of September, 2010. That next day, after my little 914 was the 15th of September, 2010. It was reporting day. I had to report once a month, because I was under Form IS-96, reporting restrictions. I reported to the Eaton House Reporting Center, as usual. I told UKBA that I had a serious problem and was staying away from my home temporarily. I said I needed to discuss my new problem with them. UKBA would not discuss my problem. But they wanted me to go inside for interviews. They were preparing paperwork to make me attend interviews. At that time, I did not know what going for interviews meant. Later, I found out it was slang used by UKBA which meant deportation to your country of citizenship. I had with me Form IS-96 and Form IS-151A. That was required under the rules. 
the officer snatched my IS-151A. She came back with another form, and the new form was IS-151B. The UKBA has hundreds of forms, each having a unique name. For example, they have IS-151A, IS-151B, IS-151C, and IS-151D. The UKBA officer had changed my legal status. These four forms are different stages of the deportation process. They are to be interpreted as ready, steady, on your marks, go. Form IS-151D will contain your flight number time and date. IS-151C means they intend to deport. Immigration will first take you into custody before serving IS-151C and IS-151D. UKBA are afraid you will run away when you realize they plan to soon fly you out to your country. Therefore they like to give people a surprise. Reporting is like the game of musical chairs. You keep attending reporting. You do not know on which day in the reporting center they will be asked to come inside to attend an interview. Once you are inside for interviews, you are in custody. You will not be allowed to leave after the interview. You will be served one of many legal notices, all of which mean UKBA will soon deport you. IS-151C and IS-151D are only some of the notices they can serve on you, but all notices they serve on you will be about deportation to your country. I was called for interviews on December 9, 2010, at the Eaton House Reporting Center, in the London Borough of Hounslow. I was in the Jarlswood Immigration Removal Center from the 9th to the 14th of December, 2010. Photography was strictly prohibited in Jarlswood. There was a painting in the mess hall. It was a picture of a cross-shaped pier jutting into the sea. Four guys are seen jumping into the sea from all four arms of the cross. In January 2011, I had been released from detention to go home but was still on deportation. I made a subject access request to UKBA in connection to my Jarlswood stay where UKBA volunteered that information that they had ordered my 914 incident. What would have happened if I had been at home during the 914? The police came in two cars, with an ambulance. I guess that probably meant four policemen and two paramedics, six men to grab a girl. Off to some kind of medical place, judging from the ambulance. What would have happened to me if I had stayed home when UKBA broke in on my little 914? If the police and ambulance had broken my boyfriend's door on 914 and found me at home, UKBA would not have taken me to a general hospital. I would have been forced into that ambulance and taken away. Perhaps this ambulance would not have taken me to any hospital. UKBA would have taken me to a place where a UKBA doctor would write a medical report about me. UKBA have their own doctors, who behave differently from normal doctors. I am not sure if UKBA doctors are actually nurses. I think this medical report may have said I am insane. But I am sure UKBA doctors would have given a medical verdict that I am well enough to have a plane journey on an intercontinental flight. UKBA gets a fit-to-fly certificate for their internal paperwork before they put their detainees on a plane.